Hey everybody, welcome back to One Mic, where I watch shit so you don't have to. And today I'm here to talk about Season 5, Episode 7 of Hulu's The Handmaid's Tale, entitled No Man's Land. Before I get started though, I want to talk about social media real quick. I decided I'm going to be a lot more active on my social media pages, my social media pages for One Mic that is. Um, as you can see on the Chiron below, uh, my Twitter name is at One Mike Network. I encourage you all to follow me on there uh, just because I'm going to be putting announcements and stuff on there. I'm going to be way more active and engaged. I'm going to be using that to interact with uh, fans of this channel. Uh, I live tweet uh, when I watch combat sports on the weekend. So if you're a fan of combat sports, you know, you could watch UFC 280 with me in, in some form <laughs> on Saturday. You know, I put up... Uh, a post on YouTube. It was like a like a text post when I decided I wasn't going to cover Rings of Power anymore. And some people saw it, but I still got questions like, hey, what happened with this? And people just don't see that. You know, I don't know how YouTube uses uh, text uh, posts. Like, you know, how does that hit your feed? I don't know. I posted it also on social media, though, but people didn't see it. So, like, I just want to encourage you guys, you know, search One Mic on Facebook, follow, like, whatever it is that you got to do over there. And follow me on Twitter. And if you shoot me like a tweet, like, hey, uh, you know, I follow you from YouTube or whatever, I'll follow you back. Just shoot me a tweet so I know you're not like some uh, spam uh, bot or some shit like that. So I just want to put that out there, let you guys know, especially on these videos that get a little bit more eyeballs, just to let you guys know, it's it's I'm going to be way more active on there. So it's going to be a good way to interact and a good way to get news updates uh, and just where I'm going to make announcements, stuff like that. So I encourage you guys to do that. But of course, you know, do whatever the fuck you want. I don't I don't care. Uh, so uh, episode seven. So I thought this was a solid episode. You know, it focused mostly on uh, June and this barn helping Serena give birth. But also I liked what I liked quite a bit what it had to say about the duality kind of like of, of being a woman uh, who has experienced Gilead, especially from two different angles. Right. You have Serena's perspective of being a woman in Gilead. You have June's perspective of being a woman in Gilead as a handmaid, but now you also kind of have that duality in that now they both can see both sides. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, like Serena, originally, she only had the wife perspective, and she only had the information that Gilead had infected her with. So that was the only perspective that she had. Conversely, June had, you know, she obviously was on the wrong side of being a woman in Gilead. Now... June is in the position of power and Serena is the one who's in the position of being a handmaid. And I like the duality that this episode uh, shows, particularly with June, and how to grapple with, I've seen both sides now. How do I want to act here? Do I want to be, do I want to do the right thing? Do I want to be the bigger person? Or do I want to exact that revenge? Not even necessarily, I, it's, I think it's less about revenge and more about I want you to feel what I felt because for some strange fucking reason, even though you're a woman, you didn't understand the harm that you were inflicting on others. And I liked the the way this episode kind of played with that duality. So um, I'm going to talk about this episode. That's going to be pretty much it. Um, I, I'm, I don't have too many thoughts at the end. So uh, let's just get into it. Uh, June opens this episode uh, realizing the obvious <laughs> that Serena is in labor. She's like, are you in fucking labor? I'm like, we, it was clear she was in labor in the last episode. But... I give June a pass because, you know, when you got a gun to your head and you think you're going to die, you might miss some things like someone, <laughs> you might miss that shit. So, like, I'll give her, I'll give her a pass. But I like when uh, they start to walk to the barn and June is like, maybe they have a major. <laughs> I thought, like, that was such a smooth little line to slide in right there that I almost feel like, uh, like Serena kind of missed it <laughs> almost. But, uh, like I said, this is the first moment where... I don't know if you guys heard that, but whatever. Uh, my uh, uh, echo thing started talking. Uh, did I say anything that sounds like the Amazon person's name? I, I don't know. Anyway, um, maybe I'll edit that out. Probably not. Uh, so like I mentioned about the duality, uh, you know, as a woman, June wants to help Serena through this moment. You know, she's been through childbirth. Serena hasn't. She wants to coach her, help her, just woman to woman. I want to help you, right? But at the same time, she has to contend with woman to woman how Serena treated her as a woman. And you know, it's like, you know, you being Serena, you know what it's like 
to be a woman, yet you treated me and the other handmaids the way that you did. And now I'm in a position to essentially teach you a lesson. But at the same time, again, this duality of being a woman here, a woman who's been in Gilead, she's in the position to finally make Serena or help Serena understand what she put other people through. But at the same time, just as a woman, woman to woman, mother to mother, it's like, okay, I want to help you out here. So it's like, I, I liked her, her, her conflict in this, in this moment and in this barn. And we flash back to uh, a sequence that I, I, I'm conflicted on how I feel about it. Um, I feel like it was a little unclear, not unclear, but no, unclear to the point where if it had been more clear, I wouldn't have an issue with this scene regardless of where it fell. So like, look, uh, let me just explain what I mean here. So we flash back to another handmaid giving birth and we see uh, it, it's this whole kind of like birthing ritual, right? You got like the woman giving birth, she's in a chair. You got someone else behind her pretending to go through the same thing. And you have this room and it's full of the wives and it's all the wives and it's full, full of all the handmaids. And they're watching this whole ritual. And Serena and June exchange glances, smiles, smirks, whatever you want to call it, that that conveys like they both think this is bullshit. Like, I'm like, ah, yeah, this is whatever. Like, this is kind of goofy. And that scene works if uh, that scene, well, I'm sorry, no, it doesn't work, but let's just say this scene takes place after the last flashback scene we saw where Serena was kind of getting into the handmade selection process. And we saw that she was very, uh, uh, she wasn't really bought in on the whole handmade thing. So, you know, we see her, like I said, they're shopping for kids and she's like, ah, I don't know if I, she's like, I, I, I don't know if I like this kid. I don't know if I like this kid. And the, and the other, the other wife is like, well, what about a handmaid? She's like, oh, I'll never do that. And then the next scene, she's picking out, you know, picking out handmaids from the manila folder. And if this is that now the next scene, and I am led to believe this is very early in the uh, Serena's handmade experience, I can buy the fact that they would both exchange glances and like laugh, like, oh, this shit is kind of goofy. I would buy that. The problem is, uh, Serena, like, Janine's already eyeless and pregnant. So, like, I feel like this is later in, uh, in Serena and June's collective experience to where they wouldn't be sharing a laugh like this. Like, like this, I feel, should be placed somewhere around season one. Like, shortly after June arrives in Gilead, uh, Janine already eyeless and, eyeless and pregnant. But the problem is, that doesn't really work because we know that June was Serena's second handmaid, and I believe that the Waterfords were Serena's second, I mean, June's second posting. So, like, this can't be early in the Gilead experience. So, like... I'm wondering if that's a, a continuity error, but it might not be because just because those two exchange glances, and this is where it gets sloppy, it doesn't necessarily mean that June was her handmaid at that time. This could still be early, and maybe Serena doesn't even have a handmaid yet, or she has that first one, and she's still kind of disillusioned with everything that's going on in Gilead, and June is also new, also not into this shit, and they just happen to be in the same room and happen to both acknowledge with each other, this is bullshit with, without the knowledge of what's to come. Like she's not actually Serena's handmaid yet. And if that's the case, this scene works a little bit more because it shows again for a, uh, uh, I think a second time uh, that, is this a second time? I don't know. At, at, the very, at the very least, it shows that Serena and June uh, had a moment where they saw through this shit together. Like they both went, this is kind of bullshit. And then it evolved into what it what it became. And now it's where it is right now, where now the roles have completely shifted. And now they're both now in this position again, where they're like, this is bullshit. This being everything that Gilead does. And uh, if, if this flashback scene is that, where it's it, that being they're not actually wife and handmaid paired yet and this is just these two people just so happen to be in the room and this is very early in the Gilead thing and they're both just kind of like that is bullshit then that scene works a lot more because then like I said you could tie it to what their relationship became versus what it is now in the barn but 
either way, it's it's just a struggle because our brains are naturally gonna, if we see a, a handmade situation and we see Serena and June in the same room, we're gonna assume that they're that they're in their situation. So I, I feel like maybe that scene could have used an extra an extra line or something just so that I know in this moment, June is not yet Serena's handmaid because if she's Serena's handmaid, they're not going to be exchanging those fucking glances because I saw season one, them motherfuckers did not get along. So, um, like, they're not going to be uh, friendly like that. So it, that scene could have used that an extra line if that's the case. That Now, if that, now if it's the case that, that, that June is her handmaid at this time, then I call complete bullshit on that scene altogether. But whatever, not a big deal. It, well, it is a big deal, but... Um, not a big deal in the grand scheme of this episode. So, anywho, the baby ends, <laughs> the baby in this flashback ends up being born via C-section, and the mother dies. Um, and June is June and Serena share another look. June is outside of this room where all the wives are kind of swooning over this baby, and Serena they again kind of lock eyes with them with this kind of like mm, this is some bullshit kind of look on each other's face, and it's. You know, they're looking like, what the fuck is happening here while all these wives are swooning over this baby like a woman didn't just die. You know, so like that was uh, that was an interesting scene. Like I said, that scene works a lot better. That whole sequence works a lot better if they just give me a line that establishes that Serena is new to Gilead and, and her role and June is new to Gilead and her role. If, the, if they had given me that, then that scene, I think, works a lot better. Uh, and then moving on to the labor scene, we, we get to the scene of, of Serena giving labor. And I, I thought this scene was great because it felt very realistic. You know, I have four kids. I've been around for four births. That's what it looks like. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, I think, you know, down to the body language, down to, uh, the breathing, the way she, like everything felt very realistic, uh, in that scene. And there's a great shot. Uh, it's after, um, after the baby is born where, the camera is facing uh, June and Serena. June and Serena are looking at each other. So we're looking at them from like kind of like a portrait angle. And they're looking at each other. And there's light streaming in between the boards or maybe through a window in this barn. And so Serena is backlit. And you could see like the sweat dripping from her face. Like I thought that was a really cool uh, shot. Especially given the fact that one, she just had a baby. And two, I think prior to that shot... June had meant, uh, Serena had mentioned that she had a fever or something to that effect. And June's like, you know, we got to get you out of here. You and the baby are going to die. But I thought that was a really beautiful shot. Um, after the baby is born, June makes like this devilish face before she hands it over, which was like a weird moment because the whole vibe of the episode up to that point, like I said, it's, it's felt like this duality of like, I want to help you. But at the same time, I want you to uh, understand or experience what I went through. Because when, every time I've tried to tell you what it was like, it hasn't it hasn't resonated with you now that you're experiencing it and now that I can make you feel it maybe it'll land a little bit more she kind of pushes that to the side you know to help her as a woman but in this moment she makes this devilish face like I could chuck this baby up against the wall right now and there's nothing she could do about it and it's like it was just kind of weird and then it goes away as she hands the baby over but uh, Serena names the baby Noah and asks June why she didn't kill her in the scene where she was leaving the information center and uh, Luke and uh, Luke and June come around the corner, and June's got the gun out. She doesn't shoot her. And when I did the video for that episode, I said that it was because Luke had gotten through to her. And one of the people in the comments said they think it was because Serena was pregnant. And and I think it's both of those things. And, and you know, June says I didn't want to in that in in this in this episode in this scene. And I think that I think confirms what I was saying about Luke having gotten through to her because it's one thing to. Uh, have the opportunity and choose not to for pragmatic reasons. Like I could shoot her right now. I could kill her right now, but I don't want to shoot the baby or, you know, Ezra, she don't know who Ezra is, but Ezra's here. You know, what, what, you know, making the, the calculus of why I can't, why I shouldn't shoot her is different than not having the desire, not wanting to. And that's why I kind of feel like Luke kind of got through to her in that regard, but that can still lead to a place of, he got through to me, so that caused me to not shoot you through the baby. Like, maybe if Luke hadn't got through to her, maybe she's like, yeah, fuck it, I don't care, and shoots her anyway, despite the baby. But to me, this felt like a shift in June's mindset. And when you couple that with the way uh, she handles this, this labor situation, it feels like 
the show is moving June away from a revenge on Serena mindset and pulling Serena into the fold to kind of make everybody against Gilead mindset. And I, I, I don't know where I stand on how I feel about how quickly they might shift June from one side, from one team to the other. Like, I don't like it. If, if in the next episode, they start to kind of like integrate Serena into, uh, into June's like way of thinking. No, no, no. If they integrate her to the way of thinking, I'm okay with that. But if she's like officially like on their team or something like that, I'm gonna be like too fast. But, um, this should be kind of like the start of us positioning Serena to be on uh, June side, like officially, like I'm going to be in Canada, I'm going to be on on the rebel side. And I, I feel like this should be the start. And then now that, uh, spoiler alert for the end of this video, uh, now that Serena is arrested and Noah's been taken, she can go back to the wheelers and experience more shitty what it's like, what it's like to be a handmaid who ain't pregnant. That's going to be really fucking hard. For, like if Serena thought it was bad before when she had to uh, be watched taking a pill, imagine what it's going to be like for her now that she's not pregnant. And I think that's what's really going to uh, shift her mindset and what is going to poss possibly cause this season to end spectacu spectacularly with only three episodes left. But Serena tells June to take the baby and raise it. And she's like, Luke could raise him to be a better man than Fred. You know, how do I, how do we stop this kid Noah from becoming shitty like Fred? And uh, I like this too. Like, I like this reversal of roles here because Serena has already experienced what it's like to be a handmaid to some, to some degree with the wheelers. Now she's experiencing it from the birthing perspective. The idea of like, she even says like her being a vessel to deliver this baby to June. Like that's the exact way that they look at handmaids in Gilead, like you are a vessel to, uh, you know, grow and birth a baby for someone else. And now Serena's like, maybe I'm, you know, still bought into her Gilead mindset. Maybe I'm the vessel meant to uh, grow and birth a baby for you to raise since there's nothing left for me. I can't go back to Canada. I can't go back to Gilead. And, you know, she says very directly, it's like being a handmaid, which it is. And what she is experiencing with the wheeler. So I like that kind of role reversal of Serena uh, getting deeper and deeper into, uh, you know, shifting from the side of I was a wife who inflicted this harm and this damage on these women who were handmaids. And now she's sl slowly shifting more and more like, you know, she got like pregnant handmaid treatment from the wheelers. Now she's giving birth and she's understanding what it's like to potentially just be a vessel just to carry a baby for someone else. And then now potentially she might end up experiencing what it's like to be a handmaid who's not pregnant. And I think that's a very interesting journey for Serena that will undoubtedly end poorly because I doubt Serena is anywhere near as strong of a person as June is. So uh, who knows? That could be some foreshadowing, some unintentional foreshadowing for me, from me that things could end poorly for Serena. But um, June decides that she's going to, uh, you know, help and take the high road and not do Serena like she's done other women, which is it's it's admirable. You know, it's like, OK, I'm not going to ditch you. I'm going to take you to the hospital. We're going to make sure that you're taken care of or you and his baby are going to die. And, you know, I, I. I understand that, and I think that's the correct path for this character, given everything that has happened so far. It is a little unsatisfying for June to like finally get the opportunity to exact revenge and to take the high road. But I'll allow it because, again, it makes sense. They set that up. They've earned that. But what I don't like, though, is how after she gives this whole kind of speech about, you know, basically, I'm going to I'm going to help you, uh, you know, the way, you know, I'm not going to do you like you've done me and other women. I'm better than that. I'm a real woman. I'm going to help you despite everything that you've done. She ends it with a very soft. Do you understand me? Which I thought was a great callback, but so fucking corny. Like, so it's a callback to the Do You Understand Me moment from last season, which was incredible. And it was, it was actually, it was in, a, in essence referring to this moment. June cursed that baby. Like, that baby's gonna, like, what do you say? Like, uh, when that baby is ripped from your arms and, and you will feel a fraction of what, it, you know, like she wished this upon Serena. She wished what ultimately ends up happening. Like the baby's not taken from her arms in a literal sense, but the baby's taken away. She wished this on Serena and then delivered the powerful, do you understand me? And is now committing to doing the exact opposite 
and hitting her with a soft do you understand me. So I, I like the contrast there. I get it. It's a good callback. But I still thought that was so fucking corny, man. I don't know what to say. That was really corny to me. <laughs> um, another kind of uh, interesting bit of contrast here. And that speaks again to kind of like the duality of being a woman in Gilead. Uh, Serena finds the hospital nature to be off-putting. And I think it's like the organization, the 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 scheduling, the 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 cleanliness. I don't want to say the cleanliness, but like the very it feels scientific. I think that's the best way to put it. The hospital feels very scientific, like a lab, and it feels very non-personable. And Serena doesn't like that. And that's because that's in direct contrast with even though they made fun of it, the loving, calming, supportive, and homely experience that you get while giving birth in Gilead. So I like, again, that contrast of the duality of being a woman in Gilead. Like, you know, you can be who Serena was in that moment as a wife, and then now you can now she can be who she is now as a person giving birth, experience, give, having a similar experience so far as to what handmaids have where they are. Um, one thing that I thought was a little weird though, is like in this hospital scene, she says something to the effect of like, uh, you can stay right where you are. She goes, no man's land. And I'm like, wait a minute. That sounds like no, like the hospital is in no man's land, which I think that was just a pun. Like her saying no man's land was like a play on words. And like the hospital's not literally in no man's land. But I do, uh, that did kind of trigger that. I do want to point out again, I still think this show does a terrible job and I pointed this out last season when I'm saying again, I think this show does a terrible job of uh, placement, like letting you know where you're at in relation to other places, boundaries, uh, maps, those sorts of things. Like, I don't know where this hospital is. They often don't tell you if you're in Canada, if you're in Gilead, if you're a portion in a portion of the United States that's not in Gilead. They often don't tell you. You just kind of got to figure it out. Like, like, even then in Canada, it's like, okay, I'm assuming this hospital is in Canada, but that's not really laid out until I think it is laid out like later, but you know, they don't do a very good job of that. Like I like to know where I am in relation to things that I'm familiar with. So if they tell me this hospital is in Toronto, you know, okay, now I know where this hospital is. So now if a character goes, we have to go to no man's land and then we're going to go to New York. Now I know, okay, they, they got to get from Toronto to uh, the border. That's probably, I think it's around like Buffalo area of New York. Uh, and by Niagara Falls, you know, they got to get the Toronto, Niagara Falls area or whatever, Buffalo, and it'll be in New York. And then now I have an idea of where things are in relation to one another. And like, I just, this show just doesn't do a good job of that. Like, I have no idea where I am in relation to what other places, what boundaries there are, that sort of thing. And I think the show could stand to do a little bit better with that. And that's just her just saying that just kind of triggered that thought. And I just wanted to bring that up. Um... And then finally, we end the episode. Luke shows up in the hospital, which I I didn't like how they just waved away the way things ended for Luke in the last episode. <laughs> like, it looked like Luke was being taken away to be killed. And then they're just like, they just wave it away. They just like hand wave it away with a line. Like, oh, they let him go at the border. It's fine. And now he's at the hospital. Like, okay, like that's a weird way to resolve what looked like it was going to be the start of the end of Luke's life. And they're just like, ah, eh, they let him go. <laughs> but he shows up. And apparently, oh, well, one, he confirms that he was able to get the USB drive that was given to him by that Jaden guy in episode five in the bowling alley. He was able to give that to Mark Tuello. And then we also realized that he has called the cops and the police come and they apprehend slash detain Serena. And they don't take the baby because the baby's not with her at the time. He's in the NICU. But they also take the baby, presumably to give the um, child protective services or whatever the Canadian equivalent of that is. And June seems to be... Uh, conflicted about this, which again makes sense given the events of the episode. And I also like that, even though I th I thought they were about to go this direction, I'm glad they didn't. I thought she was about to come at Luke with like, "What have you done?" Like, okay, like this was the point. <laughs> like, this is where everybody wanted this to end up, right up until your experience in this barn that nobody experienced but you. So if you get on Luke about like what have you done, Luke will be like stick to the plan, motherfucker. That's what I did. Like so, like I thought that's where she was about to go. I'm glad she didn't. I'd rather her just kind of like, you know, they leave the hospital and they talk about this and they iron it out, and they and she says, you know, this is what I experienced in the bar or whatever. Get to that point 
where maybe you can sell Luke on the idea of helping Serena. But like, if she, I felt, I thought she was about to turn on him in that moment. I would have completely called uh, bullshit on that. Uh, so lastly, uh, a couple of thoughts I want to wrap up with. I like how uh, Serena says that Noah looks like Fred and June makes a face. Like, the fuck? Like, the baby was born 42 seconds ago. It does not just, that doesn't already look like Fred. What the fuck? And then June makes a comment about how babies always start off looking like their dads and it's because of evolution. And, <laughs> and Serena makes a face about evolution. Like, evolution? What the fuck? We, are, we about Team God over here. It's about some evolution. <laughs> I, thought that, I thought that was just interesting. Um, and... I'm going to just go ahead and say it. We experienced long shot of June staring into the camera for the 8.7 millionth time. I just want to reiterate how fucking over I am of that hack ass shot that they need to do eight times per Handmaid's Tale season. That is such hacky, corny, sucker bullshit. I hate it. Stop making her stare into the camera like it's, they treat it like it's this glorious, majestic, brilliant, artistic piece of work that you do every fucking episode. It has no fucking effect other than sitting, making me sit here and go, you're doing this stupid shit again. That's how, that's what, how, that's the only effect it has. Stop doing the June staring into the camera shot. You've done it 80 fucking times. Cut it out. That's it. <laughs> so, uh, despite that ending, uh, I really like a lot of the themes that they played with in this episode. Let me know what you thought in the comments, and I'll see you guys next week episode 8. Peace. Oh, shit, wait. No, not peace. Remember, I'm also going to be on <laughs> the Resisting Gilead podcast uh, for this episode. We're recording that tomorrow. So if you uh, have not already subscribed to that podcast, do so. I don't know when the episode is going to be out, but we're recording it tomorrow night. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, something like that. So now I will see you guys next week with episode eight. Peace.